Hi all. Let's have a look at a few more games from the amazing Chess Olympiad. There was really uh, fantastic games played in that event. Now this game I'd like to show you is in round seven when the England team met the mighty Chinese team. So China uh, have four players, well they had four players in the Olympiad, all over 2700. Nigel Short was on board four against Li Chao who's 2746. So Nigel Short's 2666 at the moment. Uh, so let's see what happened in this board four game in particular. D4 from Li Chao. Nigel Short played knight f6. We have after c4 e6 and white plays knight c3 allowing the Nimza Indian bishop b4 that pinning the knight. Named after Aaron Nimzovich, one of the leading hypermodernists. Knight f3. We have b6. So Nigel Short is still interested in putting pressure on e4 here. He doesn't have to take on e3 immediately. e3 is played. Sorry, it doesn't have to take on c3 immediately. e3 is played. We have bishop b7. Bishop d3. Black castles. Bishop d2 unpinning. So white's not going to suffer a structural damage here. D5. We have C takes, E takes, now white castles, knight BD7. So at the moment, yeah, an interesting position. Black's still controlling, it seems, firmly the E4 square. We have rook C1. And there might be the possibility of knight b5 at some point a6 is played so the b5 square can't be used by white now a very aggressive idea here knight e5 this is the start of trying to get a kind of pillsbury bind on the position it would perhaps be unwise for black to take because then there's pressure on d5 yeah this looks like an uncomfortable position but also if this knight's dislodged yeah there might be some dangerous threats emerging so Nigel actually accepted the dreaded Pillsbury bind here white plays f4 I say the Pillsbury bind there was a great player Harry Nelson Pillsbury who died tragically at a very young age uh, he had he shot to fame uh, with some fantastic tournament results and some of his games featured this bind with this knight on e5 supported by pawns on d4 and f4 so how does black actually try and defend here we see knight f8 which has both knights looking after h7 bishop e1 which introduces the idea now of pinning the knight on f6 quite dangerous already it's quite a dangerous looking position here it's almost like a stonewall attack with a bishop actually quite useful coming to h4 usually it's on c1 and blocked in c5 we have bishop h4 pinning this knight okay now we have c4 which does actually release some of the central tension as well it seems as though Black's kind of giving white, Nigel Short is giving white a kind of free hand here. He's playing on the queen side, but it does seem extremely dangerous, this position. And now a very, very aggressive move is played g4. Very interesting and aggressive. There might be an alternative here in rook f3. For example, like this is pretty dangerous as well. And it's pretty routine stuff. For any stonewall attack player to play rook f3 to h3 so if we have this position for example it starts to look a little bit dangerous here if we analyze a bit from here this looks like a dangerous position for black very dangerous white actually might be uh doing quite well for example like this it's this is just an example where even play on the queen side could have an impact on the f8 knight potentially it's just an example but uh, yeah, the stereotypical you know, move 
sequence, you know, Rook F3 to H3 is also to be considered here, basically. But uh, we see here G4 might have some downsides because it's around the king, there's a potential vacuum. But at the moment, how does black actually tap into white's king safety at all? Queen B6 is played, which still defends the knight from there and also puts pressure down this diagonal. G5. Now knight e4, this is a classic recipe to try and at least get a grip on the light squares that white has weakened because white's putting a lot of pawns on dark squares with this kind of stonewall attack. Knight takes, d takes, queen e2. Now it's, uh, I mean this position looks pretty dangerous, there might even be tactical ideas sometimes if it's exploiting the diagonal with the knight on um, e5 but uh, here things are nailed down with bishop d5 blocking the pawn securing c4 securing f7 things seem to be quite well nailed down and also it does support a defensive battery on e4 which is needed now queen g2 putting pressure on e4 the defensive battery against this so holding e4 but again now it looks really dangerous after f5. How can Nigel Short cope with this position? But there's a weakness of this move. There's a, a weakness of the last move. This knight is not so securely placed now on e5. In fact, this is the subject of scrutiny. Knight d7 now, which has been slightly loosened. The knight retreats to g4, maybe with a vengeance to come to either f6 or h6. In advance of that, king h8 looks like a very good safety precaution. Bishop g3, rook ac8. Black does have a mobile pawn in this position, one mobile pawn, which might be of some significance to place for c3. But at the moment, after queen h3, yeah, this looks extremely dangerous with ideas of g6 now. And for example, h6 just sacking on h6. So actually we have a very interesting defensive move, f6, which potentially opens up this diagonal, not diagonal, this, this rank for defense if needed. Uh, but also of course knight f8 is still available, but this pressure on f6, it's dangerous. g6, knight f8 holding h7 against the main threat, rook f2. Okay, here, we have rook c6 and white builds up a bit more with rook the rooks doubling there a5 rook g2 if you look at white's position it really does look kind of menacing these pawns this queen the rook yeah the knight it looks quite kind of menacing but um remember nigel's got a mobile pawn here but he wants to make the most out of it he plays actually a4. Can he prove the relevance of this queenside play for anything like king safety? Rook f4. White seems to be whipping up an even stronger attack configuration. But it's here, now that a4 has been played, it's here actually that this mobile pawn is made use of with c3. But is it doing anything? What has it achieved? Nigel is undermining that c3 square. How is c3 relevant though? Pardon me. After c3, yeah, b takes, bishop takes c3. Black is under critical pressure now after bishop h4. Putting more pressure on f6 as so though there's going to be an immediate sack there, followed by g7. The rook is just waiting to support g7. We have queen b6, a battery defensive defensive battery on f6 just to show the threats here if black carries on this really is for real knight takes this will be uh, crushing absolutely this position maybe strongest is bishop f2 here then taking and this is just all over so yeah queen b6 quite needed actually to support f6 G takes h7. We have rook e7. 
Now, just to show what's going on here, there's another one. If, say, this is put a, a meaningless move in just to show the threat. Queen g3 on g7. And then knight takes f6, and there's all sorts of mates coming to g8 potentially. Or queen g7. Or just taking the rook. Yeah, it's just too much. So, yeah, black has to be uh, defending here. We have rook e7. Knight e5 is played. This is now threatening the rook. And also, yeah, it just looks really, really scary. Uh, so what does black do? Well, it's taken. We have bishop takes e7. e takes f4. So why has white sacrificed here? Because of this possession, he thought this perhaps was winning. Bishop takes f8. How is black defending this position? Now just to show you, if black, he didn't play this, He play, if he plays rook c7 to defend g7, then here, this is strong for white, rook takes here, for example, as a token defense here, rook g6 threatens the queen and also now f6 and bishop g7. This is just really too strong. You know, if the bishop moves back, rook g8. If the queen moves here, uh, we've got things not just like f6, but also even bishop d6 for bishop e5. It's just far too strong and menacing this position. But there's a fantastic defensive move in this position here that saves the day which Nigel Short plays. I wonder if you can guess it if I give you five seconds to pause the video here. And clue, it's based on the history of the game. What was Black trying to do on the Queen's side with his mobile pawn? What, it did, what did it do? We can see free. If I give you that as the clue, what would you play here with Black to try and defend? And counter-attack. Okay, he plays bishop takes d4. Defending g7 here. And there's also breaking through on the e3 square to white's king. So this is starting to have implications both for defense and attack. And it's a central square. Logic to it. The central square, the pivot. Okay, we have queen g4. Uh, if f6 taking unless queen takes e3 check here and this position is um, dangerous but uh, white is threatening things like queen g8 check here it looks uh, very very dangerous Queen f3, black gets perpetual here. Yeah. Okay, so f6 is a very dangerous try. But uh, white plays uh, queen g4 here. Okay, we have rook c7, queen h5. Now f3. The rook moves. And now we have bishop e5, so the queen is now attacking e3. Yeah, the counterattack is on its way. Uh, but apparently, even Bella was actually just playing the check. For example, like this, with queen f6, with the threat now of queen a1 check. It's a very, very complicated position. I'll uh, just take this a bit further. Bishop takes, takes, king takes. Yeah, it's better for black. So uh, yeah, Nigel's counterattack is really, really good here. But uh, you know, even stronger apparently was Bishop takes. Yeah, difficult to see. It's a very, very complex position. And it's around this time or earlier that actually Nigel would be stopped during the game uh, to be engine checked if he had an engine on his person. He tried to brush aside the uh, the the, the FIDE controller doing that and. Um, 
So that was to be uh, suspended until after the game. Thankfully, yeah, the game was not interrupted that much more. There's, there's a YouTube video about that. Nigel talks about that. Yeah, it's during this game. It's like one of the most tense games of, of the tournament for Nigel. Um, so, okay. Uh, Bishop c5 was played. Very, very scary uh, move to see on the board. Uh, Bishop c5. But uh, Queen h6. So that helps shield the h file just in case of checks and, and h file checks. Check. So the Queen secures the h file. But uh, the Bishop is dropping. However, here. Uh, rook takes c5 and now e3 is weak yep queen e7 now Nigel plays a great move fulfilling all the ambitions of the counter attack really can you see what black plays in this position if I give you five seconds starting from now the threat from white is things like rook h4 if black's not careful Okay, black plays check. It's all running with check. This counter attack now. King g2. Yeah, if it takes, then there's check here. Check, check. Yeah, mating. So this is, yeah, the counter attack. Bishop c4 threatening to queen with check. That's taken and now queen takes h2 check and the game ended here if it had carried on say rook g2 rook takes f5 check queen takes g2 and black is uh, forcing a uh, checkmate soon from this position for example after check king g6 there's no more immediate checks for white to have and black's going to be mating it's an incredibly complex game and I have no idea really why I wanted to show you this incredibly complex game. I'm sure there are tons of variations I've missed out. I'll give you the annotated PGN. Uh, there will be a link in the description and there's also an embedded link to the site if you want to check out the annotated PGN. Uh, but yeah, it was actually considered by Nigel Short as one of his better games of the tournament. The Chinese team had some mishaps actually despite having such a mega strong team they did lose to some lower average rating teams uh so they didn't perhaps fulfill their greatest expectations in this particular olympiad but uh yeah on this on this day the england team beat the, the mega powerful chinese team with two wins and two draws actually it wasn't just this win michael adams beat um wang yu on board one who's 2737 Adams is 2738. Adams was the only one to outrate just by one point uh, his Chinese opponent on board one. Uh, so Ding Liren drew with David Howell and Yu Yangi drew with Luke McShane. So yeah, a triumphant, fantastic day for England in round seven. And I thought this had to be reported on here. Okay, hope you got something from it. And check out maybe Nigel's interesting YouTube video about being engine checked potentially during the game. Okay. Comments, questions, likes, appreciated. Thanks very much.